Hi guys, Jimmy McIntyre here. Before we move on to the tutorial, I just want to mention my brand new photography course, The Art of Photography, which came out last week. It's got some fantastic reviews and it's by far the largest photography course I've ever done. It's six and a half hours of material. It includes a free Photoshop beginners course and some free Lightroom presets. And it's also got actions in there. And it teaches us to shoot and process lots of different types of scenes like landscapes, uh, interiors, long exposures, seascapes. It teaches us how to exposure blend lots of different scenes, how to choose brackets, how to bracket correctly. Um, it even shows us how to blend uh, panoramas from cityscapes to landscapes. So there's a huge amount of material there. And like I say, it's got some fantastic reviews uh, within the week that it's been out. It's currently on sale, so you can get it for 30% discount if you get it in August. And all my other products are on sale as well, so you can get a 25% discount on everything else that I sell, including Raya Pro and Instamask. So on with the tutorial. This is the Challenge Jimmy episode, so thank you very much to Herman Foster for sending in your beautiful photos. We've got a gorgeous scene here. This is the base exposure. This is the darker exposure with some beautiful light. And this is the brighter exposure. And Herman's composed this scene fantastically. He shot it really well. He's done a very good job. And when it came to processing, he processed the image initially in HDR. So you can see his initial effort. And this is fairly typical of HDR software or tone mapping software, I should say. Uh, we have some strong saturation, a lot of details, and he wasn't happy with the final result. So he wanted to see what would happen if we used exposure blending and tried to create a more natural scene. And so this is the final image that we're going to come out with. Now guys, you can take part in Challenge Jimmy. You just send me your JPEGs of a scene that you found difficult to process, and hopefully I can give you advice on that. You can see the email address popping up here, and it's also in the description of this video. So like I said before, we have these three exposures, and all I'm gonna do is select all three exposures, go to Lens Profile Corrections, and remove Chromatic Aberration, and enable Profile Corrections. I'm not gonna do anything else here, I'm just gonna open up the images as smart objects. But before I do that, I just wanna mention one thing. I'm gonna show you a slightly different exposure blending process here. And it's just going to be following on from the last Challenge Jimmy video where I showed you how to match exposures when blending interiors. Now, if you haven't watched that video, I highly recommend it. So you'll see it in the description of this video. Please watch that first. And it uses a process called matching, which is very important for matching contrast between exposures so that we come out with a really natural blend. Now, guys, I'm also going to show you a slightly more extended version of that which I don't usually use in my videos, and I know it's slightly more advanced, I know it's a little bit more complicated or a little bit uh, longer to do, but I just wanna give you a new tool or technique in case you come up with a similar situation and you don't know how to process it. So I know sometimes I get some negative comments on my videos say, asking me why I'm choosing a slightly more advanced way of doing things or a longer way of doing things. I don't usually do this. So this is just to give you something else to think about when it comes to post-processing. So please, no negative comments today. So I'm gonna take these three exposures into Photoshop as objects. So I hold down Shift and you see it changes to open objects. By doing that, we open our images as smart objects and it means we can open up Adobe Camera Raw again and make non-destructive changes. So with our images in Photoshop, I'm gonna press Stack in Instamask and that's gonna stack them. Now guys, I'm going to use Instamask here to show you how to do the post-processing, but I'm also going to show you how to do without Instamask. So don't worry, you don't need to buy my software. I never try and force my viewers to, to buy any software uh, unless they really want to. So essentially, I've put my base exposure at the bottom, my darker exposure in the middle, and my brighter exposure on top. And that's what I always do. Now, I'm going to take my darker exposure and I'm going to right-click on it and I'm going to choose new smart object via copy. And I'm gonna call this darkest. Now I'm gonna take my base exposure and I'm gonna duplicate that. And we're not actually gonna use this for anything. I'm just gonna call it example. Now I'm gonna make my brightest exposure invisible, my darkest exposure invisible, and my dark exposure invisible. And I'm gonna open up Instamask and I'm gonna choose a bright one mask. And there we have a fairly Good selection of the sky. Now, before I do that, I just want to mention one thing. I'm going to 
cancel that. Sometimes when I see landscape images online, I have a beautiful sunset like this or sunrise and we've got a little bit of snow on the mountains. Occasionally the scene doesn't look very natural because the mountains often look too bright in comparison to the sky. And let me show you what I mean. I'm going to take the magic wand tool here and I'm just going to take it along the sky like this. So sometimes we'll see a scene which looks pretty much like this. It doesn't look natural at all. And when we're exposure blending, we have to think quite a lot about what looks natural to the eye in terms of brightness. There's no reason why these mountains should be as bright as this, especially not when we have a dark sky like this. It just doesn't look natural. And this is the beauty of luminosity masks, for example. Because we're making selections via brightness, we often have a much more natural feathered blend. So when you're blending exposures with mountains which have snow on the top, try to be careful not to make the snow too bright. We have to make it look much more natural. And to do that, I'm going to open up Instamask, press Brights 1, and I'm going to create quite a contrasting mask here. So I'm trying to make a selection of the sky, so I want the sky to be quite white, and I'm trying to exclude much of the mountain. So I'm making a really harsh selection. Now I can press Select, I can press black M, which creates a black mask on my darker layer. I can press B, which selects the paintbrush, make my darkest exposure visible. Press Command and H or Control and H. Choose a white paintbrush. And watch what happens. I can just paint in the sky very naturally. Now I'm going to choose a lower opacity for my brush, let's say 30%, and paint in some of the water too. Just a little bit. Then I'm going to press Command and D or Control and D to deselect the active selection. Now you'll see, obviously, we flattened the contrast in the mountains. It doesn't look very natural at all. But we're going to fix that in a second. But before we do that, I'm going to show you how to blend those exposures just as I did in case you don't have Instamask. So I'm going to make my darker exposure invisible. In fact, I'm going to leave my darkest exposure visible, press Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac, and click the mask icon here and that creates a black mask. So we're building the mask around the base exposure. Now I'm going to create a curves layer and this is going to house our luminosity mask. This is where we're going to keep it. Make sure the mask is selected, go to image, apply image, have your settings exactly the same as mine and press OK and now we've created a mask on this layer. We hold down Alt or Option on a Mac and we see what our mask looks like we can press Command and L or Control and L. And this is the Levels dialog, which is similar to the sliders in Instamask. And again, we just bring along the highlights and try to make that contrasting selection that we had before. So I think that's a pretty good selection. So I'm going to press OK. And here's our mask. So I press Command on a Mac or Control on a PC and left click on the mask. Then I make the mask invisible and you see we've created these marching ants. Now I've selected the black mask. I press Command and H or Control and H to hide the marching ants. I have my paintbrush set to white, opacity all the way to 100 and I just paint in again that sky. And at a lower opacity I do the foreground here. So you can see obviously using Instamask is a lot easier, but you can actually create actions which will do all of this for you. So I would recommend doing that if you want to save yourself a bit of time. So I'm going to delete that luminosity mask. So how do we go about making this contrast look a lot more natural in the mountains here? Well, again, we're going to use a process called matching, which is what we used in the last video. And I can't tell you how important this is in exposure blending. Even though it looks like it, it doesn't create more noise, it doesn't create any more chromatic aberration or any sort of image degradation. So to do this, the first thing I'm going to do is double click on the thumbnail here of the base exposure. Now we know that the mountain here is simply too bright for it to match the sky in the darker exposure. So what do we have to do? We have to darken the mountain. And to do that, all we need to do is bring the highlights all the way down. And once we've done that, we simply press OK. And watch how this matches up nicely. So this is before. We've got some weird flattened contrast. I'm going to zoom in a bit more. And this is after. So it looks much more natural. Now I can also, I'm going to zoom out a tiny bit because I think the mountain's a little bit dark. 
and I'm going to double click on the thumbnail of the darker exposure and this time I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to bring the exposure up, I'm going to bring the shadows right up, but I'm going to bring the highlights all the way down. Now I'm going to brighten up the exposure quite a lot. Now we don't want the highlights to be too overexposed, but don't worry if they are a little bit bright. So I'm going to bring up my shadows and what we're doing here is we're matching the brightness to some degree of the base exposure. It doesn't have to be identical, it just has to be similar. So I brought up the exposure, I brought up the shadows, so now it's roughly the same brightness level as the base exposure. Now watch how natural this looks. So now we've brightened up the mountain so it looks much more natural and again we have no added noise, no chromatic aberration. Everything looks completely natural. And this is a really important concept that I teach in the art of photography along with many other different techniques. Now, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. And the thing is we can see that the sky is still a little bit bright. We've got some slightly overexposed areas here, but it's not too bad. But also it's very bright up here and the water's a little bit bright in the foreground. So what I actually did before, I duplicated that darker exposure. And we're gonna use this darker exposure just to bring back some of these highlights and darken some of these areas. And this is a process called double processing. Again, something else that I taught in the art of photography. So what I'm gonna do here is create a luminosity mask, again, but I'm gonna create a black mask on my darkest exposure first. So you should do that too. It's exactly the same as what you just did with the last exposure. And I'm gonna press brights one. And so we've got a selection of more or less everything there. So we need to create more contrast and I'm just targeting the brightest parts of the image. So you see we've selected the clouds up here and all I need to do now is press select and we've got our marching ants and press command and H or control and H. Select my mask of the darker exposure, choose a paintbrush, have a white foreground and I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller but make an opacity of 100. And look, I'm just painting in the areas in the sky there. And I'm gonna choose a lower opacity for the water here. And so that's the before and after. See, we've just brought back some of that information there in the clouds. Now I'm gonna press Command and D or Control and D to deselect the active selection. I'm gonna create a bigger brush, choose an opacity of let's say around 50%, and I'm just gonna paint in with a white paintbrush this darker exposure. In fact, I'm gonna bring up my opacity to around 100%. Now you see we're not making a massive difference here. That's because we need to, again, double click on this thumbnail and we're gonna bring down the highlights. So we're giving our sky a little bit more contrast and restoring some of the brighter areas. And now I wanna give these clouds a little bit of kick. I wanna give them a little bit of contrast so I can bring up the clarity cider a little bit and you see we're drawing out some nice detail. Now I'm going to press OK. And so now we've added more contrast in detail. I'm going to choose the mask of this darkest exposure, put my opacity down around 50% and paint in this area. So we're trying to make a nice smooth transition from the darkest exposure to the other dark exposure in the sky. And I'm also going to bring down my brush opacity to around 30% and paint in the area here in the water because the reflection should be darker than the sky. So here's the before and after. And now if any of the mountain has been affected, it's really easy just to choose 100% opacity, the black brush, and just paint some of it out. So there's the before and after. So we've done a great job of restoring lots of the detail in the clouds. And let me just explain what we've done there. We've used this dark exposure here to bridge the gap between what was originally the base exposure. So this is what the base exposure looked like originally. And then we matched our two exposures and we're using this darker exposure to sit between our base exposure and this really dark exposure. Now the reason why we couldn't just take our dark exposure and just bring the highlights right down and make it dark just like we did with the darkest exposure is because we were matching it. You see, we matched the brightness levels of the base exposure, and that meant when we brought our highlights all the way down, we couldn't bring them down any further. We could have brought the whites down to some degree, but that also kills some contrast in our image. So we didn't really want to do that. 
So instead, all we've done is duplicated this darker exposure and we've used that for the very strongest highlights. So again, this is the image we started with and this is after exposure blending. Now I do think that this is a little bit strong, a little bit dark, so I'm gonna bring down the opacity of this darkest layer just a little bit, not too much. And now we're gonna blend in the brightest exposure. We just wanna restore some of the details in the shadows because the image is a little bit dark. So to do that, I always keep my brighter exposure visible. And I'm gonna show you how to do this without Instamask first. So I wanna create a mask on this brightest exposure. Then we go to image, apply image, and we keep the settings exactly the same, but this time we press invert and we press okay. And then we have it, we've blended the exposure. So that's pretty good, looking quite natural. There's the before and after. Now, if you're an Instamask user, I'm just gonna undo that and I'm gonna open up Instamask and press D1 or Darks1. And again, that looks pretty decent. So I'm just gonna select the brightest exposure and press apply. And very quickly, we've blended our exposures. Now, I don't think we need to apply any of that to the foreground here, which is exactly what's happened. So I'm gonna mask out the exposure blending in the closest part of the foreground. It just brightened up the reflection a little bit too much. And again, I'm gonna bring down the opacity if I feel like this is a little bit too bright. And what I'm looking at here is the mountains. I don't want the mountains to be too bright. And if I feel like they are a little bit too bright, but I don't want to lose too much information in the foreground here where it's quite bright, so I'm gonna bring up the opacity a little bit more. I'm gonna select the mask. I'm gonna make sure I've got a black paintbrush at an opacity of about 30%, make it a little bit smaller, and I'm just gonna brush over the tops of the mountains here. You'll see it's not doing a big difference. It's not creating any black edging or anything like that. It's just lessening the exposure blending effect. So let's have a look at it before and after. This is the base exposure. This is what we started with. We've got overexposed highlights and we've got underexposed shadows. And after all the exposure blending, we've now got a really balanced image. So where do we take it from here? Well, I don't think we need to do too much. We can do a few contrast adjustments. One of the, the unfortunate things about this image is that this tree and rock is kind of blended into the background. It's blended into uh, the trees and the mountains at the back because they're roughly the same level of brightness. We could always enhance the details through the clarity slider and slowly paint them in, but I don't think we need to do that because Herman has composed this shot beautifully and he's made sure this rock and these trees are right in this gap here. So we still have something to look at. So I'm not gonna try and bring out too much detail here. But I do wanna add a little bit of local contrast and detail throughout the image. And we've already done that in the darkest exposures by bringing along the clarity slider. So why don't we do that now for the foreground? So I'm gonna open up the base exposure, Adobe Camera Raw, and I'm just gonna bring the clarity slider along. You see, we're bringing in some local contrast. And then I'm gonna press OK. So we've added some extra details there but we know that we take a lot of the foreground from our brightest exposure too. So let's open up the brightest exposure and bring along the clarity slider again and press OK. So now we've added some extra detail to this rock here and to this foreground here and to these trees. Now for a contrast adjustment, first of all, I wanna kind of darken the scene, give it a little bit of a vignette and I'm gonna do that earlier on than I usually do. I basically just wanna darken the sky again, just a tiny bit. So I'm gonna open up a curves layer and I just wanna bring down the curve like this. And then I'm gonna press Command and I or Control and I just to make this mask invisible or this layer invisible. Let's choose a white brush at 100% opacity, make a slightly bigger brush, and I'm just gonna paint in that layer. And I'm gonna do the same over here too. And the reason why I'm doing that is because we don't really want the viewer to focus in these areas. They're not really too exciting or interesting in any way, uh, but they do help frame these trees and this rock. So by having them really bright, we're distracting the viewer from the main focal points. And now we can do the opposite of that. We can push our viewer towards these areas by opening up a curves layer and just bringing up the curve a little bit. And again, pressing Command and I or Control and I. And we've got our foreground set to white and I just paint along these areas here. 
And so this is the before and after. You see we're shifting the balance of light in the image and we're just bringing our viewer towards the main focal points here. Now if you want to brighten up the scene with a contrast adjustment but we don't want to overexpose the scene, we can open up a levels layer let's say. We can bring it along, you see we're giving it some brightness and we can bring the shadows along as well just to give it a bit more contrast. Now obviously we've made this a little bit bright so I'm going to choose a black paintbrush and I'm going to paint out up here again. But what about the areas in the, the clouds here which are a little bit overexposed now? Well all I do is open up Instamask and choose a brights one and again I'm just going to bring my slider along until I can select those clouds and press select. Then I press Command and H or Control and H to hide the marching ants and with a black paintbrush at 100% opacity so I can just paint out those overexposed areas. So any areas that are a little bit too bright, we can just paint them out. You see we've brightened up the scene and give it a bit more contrast, but we haven't overexposed the highlights now. Now if you're not an Instamask user, all you need to do is create a curves layer, image, apply image again, or if you've done this as an action, created the action, you can just do that, but make sure invert isn't selected this time. Press OK. Hold down Alt or Option on a Mac and you can see the mask again and press Command in L or Control in L. And now we can bring along the slider. And when you're happy with your selection of the sky, you just press OK. Then you hold Control or Command on a Mac. You create your marching ants and then you can start to paint out those areas. Now with this scene, there isn't too much to do. Um, we can do a few more contrast adjustments and finish it off because it's a naturally good looking scene. We don't need to over process it. But I am going to do one little thing, which I like to do, uh, called light bleeding. But with this scene, I don't know if it's necessary, but I just want to teach you something different. And with that, we're also going to look at how to dodge and burn with color, which I have shown you before. So to dodge and burn with color, I'm going to create a new layer by pressing this button down here. I'm going to change the blend mode of this layer to soft light. Then I'm going to choose my paintbrush and click on the foreground color. And I'm going to choose a color in the sky. So something like this and press OK. Now I want to give this rock in the foreground just a little bit of warmth and a little bit of brightness. So all I need to do is paint over the rock and you see it's obviously quite strong. So I'm painting over the rock and I'm going to lower the opacity of the brush to 30% and I'm going to paint in the shadow of the rock too. Sorry, not the shadow, the reflection. And when I've done that, I just bring the opacity of this layer all the way down until it looks much more natural, let's say to around 27%. So there you go, we've just brightened it up and give it a little bit of warmth, and that warmth is the same color as the warm clouds in the sky. So it's not inconsistent with the coloring here. Now we can also do the same if we want to the rock here and to the grass on the side of the rock. So I'm gonna create a slightly bigger opacity of 50% and just paint in those areas a little bit. And we're just brightening them up, giving them a little bit more color. So there's the before and after. Now guys, if you go over the edges, we can always create a mask. Make sure our foreground's set to black and 100% brush, 100% opacity, and we just paint out any edges where we might have gone over. So there's the before and after. That's how we dodge and burn with color. You see, we've warmed up those areas. I don't know if it's a massive improvement in this image. Like I said, I don't think we need to do too much processing, but at least it's a new technique for you to look at and use. And now let me show you the light bleeding that I like to do. With light bleeding, we're simply painting in artificial light. So if we have a strong light source coming from a particular direction, but it's out of the frame, we can exaggerate that light in our frame. And we do that in the exact same way that we've just done. We create a new layer, set our blend mode to soft light. We create a big brush. Now our light source, I'm not entirely sure where it's coming from, but I think it's probably down here. So if I create a really big brush, I set the opacity to 100%. Now if I just paint in this area, see it's obviously very strong. And then I set my blend mode to let's say 70% and I can do the same in the reflection. And now 30% and I can do it here. And I'm just choosing a lower opacity each time so we have a better transition as we move away from the strong light source. And let's say 10% now and we're just brightening up so you see exactly what I mean when I say that we're exaggerating a, an existing light source that might be outside of the frame. 
Now I'm not sure if it looks very good in this scene, but I'm gonna do it anyway, just to give you a new technique to learn. And you can see on the screen right now an example of how this does work. So this is the image before I added the light bleeding, and we've got a really strong source of light just outside the frame, and this is what it looks like with the light bleeding. So in the right circumstances, it looks great. I'm not entirely sure that this is the right circumstance, but nevertheless, it could be a very useful technique for you in the future. So to finish, I'm gonna add just a little bit more contrast and possibly exaggerate that vignette that we created earlier. So I'm just gonna open up, let's say a curves layer and just bring the mid tones down a little bit. Not too much, we don't wanna darken the scene too much. And if any areas are too dark, we can create a brush, a big brush at 100% opacity with a foreground of black and paint out the areas we don't want to be affected. And then I'm gonna create another curve and bring down the upper mid tones again, press Command and I or Control and I, and I'm just gonna set my foreground to white and paint in that levels just in the top right hand corner here, and maybe in the bottom here too. And so this is the final image. We've gone from a base exposure, which has overexposed highlights and underexposed shadows, and we've restored the shadows and highlights, added more contrast, a little bit of light bleeding, and a little bit of color. So that's it for now with Challenge Jimmy. Again, please feel free to take advantage of the current sale on my products. And of course, Instamask and Raya Pro is on sale too. And if you wanna take part in Challenge Jimmy, all you need to do is send me your JPEGs to the email address you see in the description of this video. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.